Hi, my name's Sophia Monsabias. Um, I'm an intern here at the Georgia History Center. And we're going to do some needle felting today. But first, we're going to show a couple videos about the history of wool. All right, so here we go. The other fiber being processed at Mount Vernon was wool. After the sheep were shorn, the fleeces were carried to the wash house. The other fiber being the other fiber being processed at Mount Vernon was wool. After the sheep were shorn, the fleeces were carried to the wash house on the south lane of the main mansion house estate. Here they were skirted and cleaned. Skirting involved trimming away the dirtiest part of the fleece from the belly and backside of the sheep. Wool that had been cut, washed, and combed was then spun into thread and yarn. Here's how it worked. The spinner pressed down on the foot pedal to activate the machine. The foot pedal turned the larger of two wheels called the drive wheel. The drive wheel turned a cord called the drive band. The drive band had no connection to the spinner's thread. Instead, the drive band acted like the chain of a bicycle. It turned the small U-shaped flywheel. The spinner's thread was twisted onto a bobbin in the center of the flywheel. Every time the flywheel rotated, the thread twisted onto the bobbin. The twist worked to bind together any fibers the spinner fed into the machine. The spinner could see the twist of the fibers taking place between her hands. She controlled the size of the thread she made by drawing the fibers out between her hands just a bit at a time. Thick thread required more fibers, while thin thread required fewer fibers. An unsung task, but a very important one, was winding off of the thread from the spinning wheel bobbin. Wound off onto a device called a nitty knotty, the thread was measured into yards and stretched into a skein of yarn or thread. This task was most likely done by the elderly members of the spinning house. The next step in the life of a skein of thread was to be gently washed in warm, soapy water, then to be rinsed in cooler, clear water. Finally, the skein was stretched to dry. The enslaved Mima and Letty might the art of dyeing fiber with plants and animal materials had been an ancient practice around the world for thousands of years by George Washington's time. Making a pot of dye was much like making a giant pot of tea. Chopped up leaves, stems, roots, sawdust from trees, nut hulls, and even the crushed up bodies of the cochineal beetles were steeped in very hot water for several hours and then allowed to cool. Fibers were soaked in mordant before entering the dye pot. This allowed the color in the dye pot to bite or catch onto the fiber to become more vibrant and long lasting. The indigo dye required no mordant. Instead, it required a special recipe of human urine, lye, and indigo plant extract to create the many shades of colonial blue. Today, we like to provide demonstrations of natural dyeing here at Mount Vernon for the education of our visitors and because it is so beautiful to see the colors nature can create.
All right, hi, I'm back. By the way, those videos were from Mount Vernon, so thank you to Mount Vernon for the history of wool. Um, so back to, back to what I was saying, I, my name's Sophia Monsabias. Um, I'm an artist and I love doing art that I can manipulate with my hands. So, you know, things I can touch, things I can um, make myself as opposed to like something you would do with a saw. You know, just that's my that's my personal um, kind of art that I like. So like when I was a kid, I was obsessed with um, Sculpey, which is modeling clay, and I would make animals with that. Um, as a teenager, I learned how to sew, and in college, I took weaving. And now my newest <laughs> obsession is needle felting. So here's a little creature that I've made. Um, I make a lot of video game characters and like cartoon characters because I think they're um, just really cute, and I like to see them come to life. Um, so a quick note that with needle felting, it is very time consuming. For a lot of people, it's seen as a relaxing thing. I've watched a ton of movies while I needle felt. So just, if you want to like a quick craft, needle felting might not be the best thing. But if it's something that you really enjoy doing, then I think that's, uh, you know, it doesn't matter that it took you a long time and you'll feel a lot more ownership of the thing that you've created. Uh, so in this stream, I'm going to start off by giving a lot of information on what we're doing so that you can really appreciate what's going on once I actually do start. Um, so felt is my favorite material to work with, even with just hand sewing. I like felt because it's very stiff and it makes it feel like I have more control. Um, so what felt is, is this is probably what you think of when you hear felt which is these little craft sheets that you can get at the store and you know you can make like cute little people with them or whatever. But what felt is, is wool that has been matted and pressed together. Actually it doesn't just have to be um, wool from a sheep, it can be any animal fiber. But felt is actually one of the oldest uh, textiles. I mean obviously it's a lot easier to make than like cotton, <laughs> it's less processing. So when we're doing needle felting, what we're doing is we're not actually working with felt, we're creating it. So, just poking this right here. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to be making is an animal. And this is a kind of soft sculpture. So like, you know, a hard sculpture would be Michelangelo's David made of marble. <laughs> this is a soft sculpture, not made of marble. <laughs> um, this isn't the only thing that you can do with needle felt though. Uh, another thing I'll see people do is you can sort of make paintings. And I've never tried this before so I'm not able to tell you exactly how to do it. But uh, you can lay out felt and you can poke it into, you know, like a sunset, trees, flowers. It's really lovely. Uh, but like I said, I've not tried it before. So what we're going to do is the soft sculpture method. Um, and also, what I make is a little bit cartoony, just because that's my personal aesthetic. But you can also make things that are remarkably lifelike. Uh, and you can really play off with how fluffy the wool is. Uh, for instance, there's this picture that I see go around online a lot of this like adorable poodle moth. And people are always saying, oh my gosh, that is so cute, I can't believe it's real. And that's because it's not. <laughs> it's a needle felt. And uh, there's also like, if you ever see just an exceptionally cute sleeping bunny in the palm of someone's hand, it's probably a needle felt. <laughs> but that just shows you the kinds of things that you can do with needle felting if it's something that you wanna pick up and something that you wanna get really good at. So now that I've kind of gotten out of the way what needle felting is, I'm gonna go over the tools. So I'm gonna knock over my little critters right here. So these are, the needles, which is um, essential. Oh, we got to zoom. <laughs> which is essential for needle felt. And what makes these needles different from like a sewing needle is that they have notches in them. You'll also see them referred to as a barbed needle, but it's more properly, it's a, it's a notch. And what that does is it catches the fibers so that they can be matted and you can make them into a shape. Now, when I first started doing needle felting, I actually, for the life of me, can't remember what specifically made me want to try it. It was probably the cute picture of the poodle moth, but <laughs> I can't remember exactly what it was. But um, the way that I got started was I just went online and I bought a needle felting starter kit. And 
Even though I'm going to show you like some more complex uh, tools that you can use and methods, sometimes it's good to just start with a starter kit because it cuts down your research, it cuts down like your anxiety that you're buying the wrong thing. Um, you can also go to the hobby store and they'll typically have a needle felting section, which is in the, uh, by the embroidery and by the yarn. And there you can get basic needles, you can get your basic foam, and you can get your basic um, wool. But anyway, so the needles that I got with my starter kit were uh, just basic, simple needles. And after I had felted for a while, I decided to see what the world of needles had to offer. And that's where I got these. So what, they, they didn't come in the sponge, I put it in there. <laughs> so um, what these are is these are different, what they call gauges. And instead of just being a straight needle with notches in it, this one, for instance, is kind of um, curved or like twisted. And what that does is that gives you a little bit of a better uh, ability to mat your, your wool. There's also some that will have, this one, for instance, has a very thick um, needle <laughs> part. And this one will be good for starting out with because it felts a lot faster. But as you get to doing the more fine work, it's not as useful and you're going to want to move on to a thinner one. So that's something that as you improve, you can adapt to and you can start to add these things to your arsenal. But if you're just a beginner, you can go ahead and get a, um, you know, the needles that they have at the hobby store and that will get you well on your way to making anything. The first couple things I made were just with the simple needles. Um, you can also get these. This is a little pen. Just unscrews on the top. And then it's got like a piece of metal holding your needles in. And it has, I believe this one has the space for like five needles. And that just helps you, like I shouldn't have unscrewed it. <laughs> that just helps you um, felt faster. So, and it's supposed to make that sound. I tried to take the little plastic guard off so it would be quieter, but you shouldn't do that because um, it, makes the, it makes the needles like crazier. <laughs> they have less of a thing holding them in and you can break them more easily. Even with this little plastic thing on, I was making like a giant owl one time and I was just really going at it because I was in a hurry and I broke like five needles at once. <laughs> so um, if you do, so this is, this is a, you know, a craft that you're going to want to take your time on. Don't, don't go crazy with it. Just be methodical and um, relaxed. You can also find one that has like three needles in it, but this is, this is definitely an interesting tool to pick up. It's really good if you're making um, something round, like people will make felt ornaments. So you felt a ball and then you can put all kinds of designs in it. And that's, that's really pretty. So those are, those are our tools. We have our needles, mine are color coded, but you can get whichever kind you want. You can get these, uh, one of these pens. It comes with needles in it and then you can buy replacements. And these are actually the, basic needles that my kit originally came with. So those are our needles. And then we have our roving. And what roving in is, is basically a bundle of wool that's been dyed and processed. And it'll sort of all be going in like one direction. So you can just pull off pieces of it and put it on your sculpture. Um, with roving, when I purchased my starter kit, so like, I'm not trying to downplay the starter kit. I think the starter kit is great. Um, but like I said, it is very simple. So this is some wool that came in my starter kit. And I actually don't think it's real wool. I think it's a polyester. And it's great because it comes in bright colors and it kept the price of the kit down. <laughs> but as you start to felt more finely with it, it leaves a lot of stray hairs and it takes a little bit longer to felt. So when I first started out, I would look up these gorgeous needle felts on Instagram and I would be like, why doesn't mine look like that? All I do is, you know, I keep poking at it and it just never looks as good. And I figured out eventually that that had to do with the quality of my wool and also with my needles a little bit. So um, like I said, if you do want to make this a craft that you do more often, then it's okay to invest in uh, higher quality materials, but it's also fine to just get started with something that's like super simple 
to get you get you going. Um, so this is the wool that I started out with. It's that kind of polyester type wool. This is hiding. I keep all my wool in this little bin. So this is some wool that I got at the hobby store and I actually did find it to be better quality than the polyester kind of stuff. It's fluffier and it felt a, it felt a little bit quicker. Um, one thing with needle felting with uh, roving is that you can like you'll buy they they sell it in ounces so I was online and I saw like five ounces and I was like oh I hope that lets me finish my project and then I got this <laughs> so it definitely helped me finish my project since it's done by weight and this stuff is incredibly light it will go a long way um, especially since the statues that I make are very small very very small um, that lasts a long way. I've seen people make very big things though, like a small horse that's about that big, like a, you know the owl I was making. And if you do want to make something that's larger, um, a good thing to get is what's called core wool. And core wool is not dyed, so um, it's less expensive. I believe it might be a little bit um, thicker. But I, I haven't purchased it before, so I can't tell you quite. But core wool is made to be covered up. So, you know, it's just white. You make your shape, and then you um, put your color on top so you don't have to use up all of your pretty colors just to make, like, something with a coat of blue on it. Um, another thing people will do is they'll put armatures in their, um, in their dolls. When I first started out, I would put a, what's it called, a wire skeleton so that they could be posable. But then there was one and I was like trying to put him inside of a tiny car to take a picture of him and I like broke his leg. <laughs> so uh, you, that's something to be aware of. You also might want to get like a nicer type of armature to, um, to put in your figures. I was using floral wire which probably isn't made to be bent a lot. But armatures are definitely a thing that people will do uh, when they're making their felt figures and that'll kind of also give you a better shape. But right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to perfect my shapes and my techniques. So I'm not doing anything with uh, wire in it. And we're not going to do anything with wire in it today. So <laughs> that keeps it super simple. Um, going back to the needles real quick. So this is a craft that, you know, these are needles. They do hurt if they poke you, especially when you're like really going at it and you're like really into what you're doing and you poke too hard or you miss, it will hurt. <laughs> um, we have on our supply list that you can get finger guards and I totally forgot to bring mine because personally I don't use them and that's because I've been doing this for a while. But if you're felting with your children or if your hands aren't quite that steady or if you just don't want to get poked, um, the ones that I have, they look like little thimbles and they're rubber and they have little grippies on them and that'll that'll keep your fingers shielded a little bit. Uh, but like, you know, like the wool kit that I got uh, off, of, off of the internet, it was child oriented. So I'm not gonna say that needle felting isn't for children. It's just something to be aware of that you will be, you are working with needles. Um, okay, so then the last thing is this, or this, this little spongy thing. And what the sponge is for is so that you can lay your, uh, your creation on it. And then you can just work on, there we go. <laughs> you can just work on it so you don't have to like hold it the whole time and get all cramped up. Um, also, if you're making something like a plant leaf, you can just kind of lie it on there and you can poke at it. Uh, you will want to have to pick it up every now and then so you don't like felt it into your mat. But this is, this is really nice to have. This one actually is made of wool. It's called a Wool Buddy, which is a really cute name. And it came in like three colors. <laughs> so that's, that's why I bought it, because I thought it was really cute. But what you'll find at the craft store and what I got in my kit is this little felt sponge. Um, my dog actually got a hold of it, so that's why it looks like this. But it's just a dense block of foam. And you can, you just put your, you just put a little piece of felt on there and you felt just directly onto it. And it's very dense, so you know, you're not gonna sink in there. It's not gonna mess up your needle. And it just gives you a nice surface to work on. As for 
and they're also very inexpensive, so I don't really know about alternatives. I would say just, you know, like things you might have around the house. I would say just go ahead and get one of these. They're like two or four dollars. Um, they do wear out after a while, which is why I'm trying out the Wool Buddy, because I'm hoping it'll last me a little bit longer. Um, but that's your mat that you felt with. I was about to say that you mat with. That doesn't make sense. All right. So now that we have, let me just check my notes to make sure I did not miss anything. I do not think I did. Let's see, needles, your pad, and yep, that's right. So now we're ready to start. So birds are a great beginner project, and that is because birds are round. <laughs> I mean, not all birds are round, but popular birds like penguins, which is what we're making, or owls. Um, you know, they're very round. You can basically just make a ball and you could put eyes and a beak on it and you could say it's a bird and people will say that's a great looking bird. So <laughs> um, that's, a, that's a great project to start with. And before I start a project, typically what I will do is I'll draw a picture of what I want to make. And I know that a lot of times like with art, you feel like it just all comes out of your head, but it doesn't. Um, especially since I make a lot of, you know, I make video game characters. So I'll pull up a picture of the character just to have while I'm working on my project. And that's so that I can see, you know, are the eye, how far apart are the eyes, where are the ears, and that will just help your character or your penguin or your creature look more like what it's supposed to look like. Um, so since we're making a cartoon penguin, right after what I said about making things look right, <laughs> this is the picture that I sketched out. Um, I was thinking this kind of looks like penguins from like, I think there's like a Wallace and Gromit penguin who looks like this, or like if you played Club Penguin in 2006, they look, kind of look like this. But you know what? There's only so many ways you can draw a penguin. So <laughs> I say that this is my original penguin. <laughs> and the penguin on our uh, preview does look a little bit different. I don't want to, that's not a penguin that I've made. So I don't want to copy someone else's work exactly, but um, I will try to make it look a little bit like that. And, um, you know, this is your chance to be original. You can start off by copying something you found online, or you can try to make an animal, you know, that you've, that you've seen before. But in the end, you can really do anything you want. But today, what we want to do is make a penguin. <laughs> so... I've been waving this around for like five minutes. This is the base to my penguin. Like I said, I do not have core wool, so everything I make is very small. I also just like small things. Um, and I went ahead and started this at home because like I said, needle felting is very time consuming and I didn't want you guys to have to watch me felt a ball for like 30 minutes. <laughs> so to start this, what I did, I'm gonna go ahead and like, fake start one just so you can see what I did. So what I'll do is I'll grab a hunk of wool and you can kind of like mat it together in your hands just to get, get it started. And then I'm taking, I start with like this thicker needle just because it's um, good for starting out with. And since, it, so our penguin, he's got a round lower body and he's got a small head. And what I'm doing is I'm making something that's kind of shaped like a grape. And then I'm just poking around where I want his head to be. Let's see if I can, I don't know if I can elevate this so you guys can see it better. But I'll just hold it up when I'm done. This isn't going to look as good as the one I made at home because I'm trying to do it quickly. <laughs> but the basic idea... And you see that my felt is sticking to my mat a little bit. And when it does that, I just lift it off and turn it around. Since this mat is made out of wool, I do get little pieces of wool stuck in there. So you might want to like comb it afterwards. That will happen with the felt block too. So just be aware of that, that you're not getting like stray colors from previous projects into your work. I think I made his head too big. That's okay. He's very smart. And also the sound that it makes, if you're like really into those um, sort of ambient noises is kind of nice because it's just like the sound of the wool 
poking into itself. I guess if you didn't like the sound, you could um, put on music or whatever, or you could watch 10 Marvel movies like I did. Um, so that's, oh, there we go. So that's kind of the start of what I was talking about. You can, this is the one that I made at home. You can see that I just felt it kind of in a circle. And what this did was make the neck part very dense so that we have a separation between the head and the body. And now that we have the neck part defined, then you can go back in and you can felt the head and the body to make them more dense. Um, and your, your felt, uh, oh, that's another thing to notice is that you're gonna grab, you know, a big old hunk of wool, but it's going to get smaller as you work on it because you're condensing it. So just be aware that you're probably gonna have to bulk up your, um, your creature. You're not gonna, don't worry when you grab your first piece of wool about like, is this the exact amount that I need? Because you're most definitely gonna have to add more to it, but that's fine. And that's probably why um, they sell it in those big chunks so that you can just keep on adding to it. So that's, that's the start, but I am going to go back to the one that I made at home. And just to bulk him up a bit, so this is, how, this is how I've been bulking him up. So I started him out like this, and he became a lot smaller. And then to add to him, I just took a sheet of wool, and I laid it on top of him. So now he's like back to being just a grape. And then you do the exact same thing that you did to make him. And it gets like louder the denser it gets, but it's kind of relaxing. <laughs> um, even though people say that needle felting, so, well, I've been saying that needle felting is relaxing. Admittedly, when I started it out, I was, I noticed I was very tense. Like my whole body would tense up and I would just get like super, super serious. I found it a little bit stressful, but as I've done it more and I sort of know what I'm doing more, I have found it to be more relaxing. And I just really like that I can make anything I can think of. That's something that's very exciting to me is that I can like see a really cute dragon on TV and say, I want, I want him. And then I can just go and make him. Like that's, that's what art is about. <laughs> All right, so since, <laughs> since this is the one that I'm going, that I'm doing, I'm doing our demo on, I'm gonna go ahead and finish bulking him up. I think I hold my needle wrong because I noticed I hold it like this, but I believe you're supposed to hold it like this. <laughs> just, just so you guys know not to do exactly. I'm still, I'm still trying to get um, adjusted to the proper the proper etiquette. And this is kind of one of those things where, let's see, I've been needle felting for, I've been needle felting seriously for a couple months, but I first needle felted maybe one or two years ago. And it's only in the last couple months that it's really stuck is something that I wanted to do. Um, prior to this, like I said, I love felt. So I would use felt sheets to make dolls like sort of flat dolls, they'd be like about that big because I love making tiny things. And um, I would hand sew them, but I noticed that they would fall apart a lot and they were also very flat. So a reason that I picked up needle felting to make dolls with instead of um, felt sheets is that you don't have any, you don't have any sewing, so there's no, there's no stitches involved. And also you can create something that's round. For instance, I know a lot of people make really gorgeous plushes, but I don't really like to pattern something with a lot of pieces in it. Even though I said that I sew, but sometimes the patterning part or even following a pattern or just dealing with fabric that's very loose and flowy, I personally don't enjoy it. And I think that's kind of why needle felting has stuck with me because it's something I have complete control of. I'm a control freak, apparently. <laughs> I have complete control of it, and I can make something that's like very dense. So right now we're just 
Uh, if you saw earlier, I had a little bit of extra, so I just tore it off and put it back with the rest of my wool. Um, oh, another thing about needle felts is that pets love them, which is not good for your needle felt or potentially your pet. <laughs> um, I had this owl that I made and she had a little bow and she was just adorable. And I left her on my bed and I saw my dog playing with something and I was like, what's that? And it was the owl. <laughs> so be aware of that. If you have pets, you're gonna wanna keep your needle felt away from them. Uh, they're also, I don't consider them to be toys. So if you have a, a baby or a young child, this might not be a good gift for them to play with. You could make one and, you know, put it on a bookshelf as a, as a safe kind of a thing to take care of. But I'm not sure if they're great to be played with. I mean, I might, I might have played with them anyway, but just, just throwing that out there. All right, so I would say our penguin body is, he's very round now. I would say he's dense enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to start making him look like a penguin. And I use blue wool because um, I just thought that would make him look a little bit more exciting. And that is the thing with penguins is, I know penguins are black and white, but you know, we have plenty of cartoon penguins and you could make something and as long as it has the color patterns, people know it's a penguin. So that gives you a lot of freedom. Um, so according to our drawing, there we go. Our penguin has a white belly. So we're, I mean, all penguins have white bellies, but. So I've laid some white on there. And I'm just going to felt it right on there. And that's really how you add extra colors. Um, you could add an extra color by making like a separate little oval thing and then just felting it on top. I think that if you're a beginner, it's really nice that you can just slap some wool on there and felt it in. So I'm not going, I'm not really claiming to have the best methods. I'm just trying to produce results. <laughs> um, I think it's just good to start in the simplest way possible, which would be just laying the felt on there and felting it in. We're gonna extend this white to his underside. Just a little bit. And if you don't like something, you can tear it off. If you, if you don't like it early on, then it's easy to tear it off. If you've got it like really in there, like for instance, I would say this is a little bit past being able to tear off. Um, you can just go ahead and cover it up with more. That might be a little bit wasteful, but once you're, when you're starting out, you just kind of are going to have to use a lot of materials to get, to get a handle on what you're doing. And I see some, some creatures that are very densely felted. I've noticed lately that I've been densely felting things, but you can also leave them fluffy. Uh, people make a lot of, a lot of times people will make pets. That's very popular is needle felting someone's pet. And if you have a very fluffy dog, you know, you're going to want to leave it a little bit fluffier than something that isn't fluffy. And that's where the felt is really nice because, you know, it looks like, it looks like fur. So you just stick some fur on there and it looks, looks like a dog. I've, I've never made a dog because I'm kind of, I'm kind of afraid it might not end up looking like one. <laughs> but I'll probably give, I'll give a dog a try sometime. I really do like making birds though. They're very rewarding and they're very simple. Um, all right, I would say our penguin belly is good. So according to our drawing, there we go. The next thing he's going to need is feet. And I gave this penguin legs, I or yeah, I gave him legs. I might have this one be sitting and having them be sitting is nice because then they can support themselves. If you make a creature that is sitting or has a tail, you can have it stand up on its own um, or maybe like four legs like a horse or a fox. Uh, if you have, if you make like a person, 
just be aware that they're pro it's probably not going to be able to support itself and you'll have to lean it against something like this anteater who I made. He doesn't stand on his own. And that's okay. <laughs> but that's just something to be aware of. So I think I want this penguin to support himself. So I'm going to have him be sitting. And I have my yellow wool. And I'm just going to take, get a little bit of something stuck in there. That is a thing um, with storing your wool like I do all in just one big container is that they are going to get mixed up a little bit. So some people might be looking at this and be like, oh my gosh, what you doing? <laughs> yeah, so uh, just be aware of that. Maybe you can like keep them in plastic bags separately. I, I really don't mind that they're all in there together and I don't have a lot of space to store them. So that's how I store them. But I am picking out a little piece of black right there. Anyway, so what I'm doing is I'm taking a tiny little ball and I'm sort of pinching it at the base. And that's going to be just the run-of-the-mill generic penguin foot shape. So I'm really making Miss Libba work with the zooming. <laughs> so we have a question. Is wet felting similar to needle felting or are they different? Oh, okay. Are, did they hear me? They can, okay, they can cool. The question. Okay, cool. So we just got a question, which is, is wet felting similar to needle felting and are they different? And that is something I had in my notes and I forgot to say, so thank you. Um, so wet felting is not similar to needle felting. Um, they are both felting in the sense that you're creating felt, but needle felting is dry felting. So there's no water involved, there's no mess involved, and that is what makes it a nice relaxing craft. But uh, no, they, they are different things. I have not done wet felting before. Like I said, I'm kind of just getting started with needle felting. So I don't want to uh, bite off more than I can chew. But I'm sure eventually I'll discover something that I could only do with wet felting. And that is when I would want to expand to it. Also, I know that I have mentioned I'm sort of a beginner. But I don't want to sound like I'm not qualified <laughs> to be teaching, to be talking about it. Uh, one of the reasons that I want to give a lot of information, well, for, I mean, for starters, I do want to be transparent that I'm not like an expert on this. But one of the reasons that I want to give this extra information is because when I started out, I would go to YouTube and I would look up um, how to needle felt. And a lot of the videos just say, you know, get your materials and just poke it. But I would, you know, I kind of struggled a lot. And I think that's one of the reasons it took me a while to pick up on needle felting is because there's a little bit more complexity to it than, you know, just poke it. And that was what I sort of had to learn on my own, which is, you know, the different gauges of needles will help you get something thicker. The different qualities of wool will help you get something that looks a little bit nicer. And that's the kind of stuff that I wanna share. So I don't wanna sound like, you know, I've been felting for years, I made a person, <laughs> and it looks realistic. Um, and I'm mostly saying that just in case there is anyone out there who's um, more experienced than I am. And if you are, I would love to be your friend. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm not claiming to have all the answers, but I have been doing this for enough that I have some extra information that I want to be able to share. We have a question from Scott. We have um, another so question. You, who are the people that you follow on YouTube for crafting? Or is it sort of in a random assortment of videos? So the question is, who are the people who I follow for crafting? Um, on YouTube, I actually don't follow any filters particularly. Mostly when I searched it up, I just searched how to needle felt, and I came up with videos of people making owls and things like that. I know there are people who do streams on Twitch of felting. Um, I have not, I, for some reason, I prefer to like read things than I do watch video, than I, than watch videos. So I have not watched any, um, any streams. I do follow some felters on Instagram and I'm gonna grab my phone real quick to see if I can remember their names. I noticed a lot of people from places like Finland do felting and they do some really nice stuff. Uh, someone on Instagram I follow is named Manuni, Manuni Shop, and she makes some really lovely things. It'll be like figures, people, 
horses. She makes these like cute avocados and they have like a little pit in their stomach and they're like holding hands. Um, there are some Japanese felters. Oh my gosh, I just found out about a lady last night who does the kind of, let's see if I can find her name real quick. Is this on YouTube or Instagram? Uh, the lady who I'm talking about right now, uh, she's just an artist. Oh, okay, great, great, yeah. I might not be able to find her name in time, but I know that there is a Japanese artist who makes like cute little bunnies and she does sort of the felt painting that I was talking about um, where she'll make more scenes and things like that. Uh, I would really just advise you to go out into the, into the art world or even just out into Google and look up needle felting and see what kinds of styles you like, what kinds of creatures you like, because there are a lot of different styles. Um, you know, like I said, there's more realistic, there's more cartoony. I like what a lot of the Japanese artists will do because they use kind of like, if you're familiar with Harajuku street fashion, they'll make things with lots of stars, lots of pretty colors. And I think that's a really different and nice approach to the sort of um, realistic side of things. And I put your uh, website, do you also have social media for your crafting? The website for now? I do. So I do have, <laughs> uh, thank you, Liva, for reminding me. So I do have a website for myself as an artist. I'm sort of primarily a photographer. That's what I was educated in. But I do a lot of um, these things sort of in my spare time and just because I like to. So uh, Miss Liva, I believe, has li linked my website. Um, I also do have a social media. So with needle felting, one way that I keep myself inspired is I take commissions. And that has been a nice way to not have like 25 tiny creatures just on my desk. So my uh, Instagram for my felting is, it has underscores, Tiny Creatures Adoption Agency. And it's framed as just like a cute little adoption home where you can go and adopt the creatures that I make. And I like take cute little pictures of them. That's another thing I love is I love toy photography. So I'll like make some creatures and I'll make it look like they're having dinner. And uh, <laughs> um, that's just something I really enjoy doing. So, you know, you can do whatever you want with the things that you make. You can put them on your bookshelf. You can take pictures of them. You can do, the sky's the limit. You can make ornaments, flowers. Uh, so going back to what I was doing, here is my foot for our penguin. Oh, that's his back. Let's zoom in on that. So there's our foot. Okay. And now that I have the foot made, I'm just going to, like I did with the stomach, I'm going to felt it on his body. I put my phone away. It's going to distract me. <laughs> I'm actually still able to use my thicker needle for this part, probably because I made him really quickly. This penguin, for the interest of time, might just have one foot in the end so that I can move on to the next part, unless someone wants to ask more questions. And in that case, I will just make the foot <laughs> while answering. Oh, you can, we have time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. We've got 15 minutes technically, but we can, uh, we can go a little long. It's okay. Okay, cool. So, our, we do have time to give our penguin two feet. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie says she loves your work. Oh, thank you, Debbie. Debbie said she loves my work. <laughs> um, okay, so there's one foot. And, oh, he supports himself just fine, so that's good. And now I'm going to go ahead and make the second foot. I realized that I wore black and white today, which really works for the penguin. Even though my penguin's blue. <laughs> Alright, so we're making the second foot in the exact same way as the first one. Um, when I typically I'll felt something as much as I can or as much as I want to on the mat, and then I'll attach it to the body. And then after attaching it to the body, you can refine it even more, which we will do in a second. And that is when you can, ow, 
but you can make great use of your thinner needles. See, I'm holding it wrong again. I just want this to be like, to show that you can really have fun with this craft and you don't have to start out worrying about, you know, getting everything exactly perfect. So this is something I'll do is where I'll just hold it in between my fingers. And that's because I've been doing this enough that I feel confident enough to do that. I do prick myself every now and then. I, uh, I took a shower and my fingers got wet and I could like see all the places where I had poked myself. So don't mean to scare anyone off with that, but that is a thing that, that, that happens. Okay, so we have our, we have two feet now and we're going to go ahead and attach the second foot exactly the same way as the first one. And you'll notice that there's some felt right here underneath on his, his bottom. And if you wanted to, you could go ahead and just do another sheet of blue and that'll cover up the white and, and the, uh, the yellow that may have leached onto the bottom of his foot. So then, now that, now that it is attached to the foot, this is where we can do the refining that I talked about. And I've been, I love this purple needle. I don't know, like, I used to, uh, I just have these phases where I have a favorite needle. And right now my favorite needle is the purple needle. <laughs> and the purple needle is great for smaller detail work and it's a little bit twisted too. So it packs in the felt. And I'll just outline a shape tell the different sizes of the needles? Are they marked somehow? Uh, so how do you tell the different sizes of a needle? Are they marked somehow? That was our question. Uh, they are. So these right here, where's my hand? These right here <laughs> are color coded and I bought these, I bought these off of Amazon and I think it was like $16 for, where are they? For all of these and I broke one of them so they were a little bit more. Um, and th these are color coded and it also listed in the listing what the gauge sizes were. I also see them sold on Etsy. So they don't expect you to just like pick it up and you know, know what it is. It will tell you based on color or based on a pamphlet, which is which. Um, admittedly though, I only briefly looked at the pamphlet. So I just kind of learned by doing. I would just, you know, wor start working on a project and just interchange the needles and see what they do. Um, but the needles are made for a specific purpose, like this one's made for starting out, this one's made for adding fur, this one's made for details. Um, and once you take the time to learn those extra things, that will definitely help you. But as has kind of been the theme of this, if you just wanna get going, then just get going and learn along the way a little bit. That's also kind of what I suggest with photography is to just start taking pictures and don't worry so much about your gear at the start. <laughs> Mandy loves your Instagram. <laughs> oh, thank you. Mandy loves my Instagram. Thank you. Leslie says this has been great and it's given me the confidence to try it. Oh, okay. So I hear that um, people have, the, have been given the confidence to try it. That makes me really happy because I do, I do love needle felting. And I feel like a lot of people, you know, don't know what it is. And that kind of goes back to like that picture of the poodle moth where you just don't know about any kind of craft you could do that could make something like that. And that craft would be needle felt. <laughs> okay, so he has, his, he has his feet on. And actually the way I made the feet, it kind of looks like he's standing. And we might just roll with that. I do put more time into the things I make typically, but like I said, this is just sort of, this is the equivalent of a doodle. We're just going at it. So he's got his feet on and he's, he's a little bit fluffy. And now I'm going to look at our drawing again. He's got a beak and the beak is also yellow and it's just an oval. So we're going to take our yellow again. You can also use orange if you wanted to, but I like yellow. I think it makes him look very bold. 
So I'm gonna take that gold needle again. And the beak is actually, the gold needle's too thick. I'm gonna take the pink needle because that one is a little bit thinner and it's still twisty. And I have made beaks that are open, so that's something you can do. I've made beaks that will have like the two little lines on the nose, kind of to make it look more like, like what a bird in real life has. Like I said though, this is a cartoon penguin, so it's going to be very simple. So I've roughly made the beak now. I've got some hair in my face, there we go. <laughs> I've roughly made the beak now, and we're gonna go ahead and attach it to the penguin's face. Sometimes you can feel kind of mean when you're needle felting because you're poking an animal's face, but I think that they're thankful because they're able to have a face now. You're giving them life. That's kind of a fun way to think about it. Have you ever used pipe cleaners to help them stand up or what would you recommend to have them stand up? Um, the question, have I ever used pipe cleaners to make them stand up or what would I recommend? I have not used pipe cleaners and that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, what I was talking about, let's see. Typically just to help something stand up, I'll prop, you know, I'll prop something up behind it. So we got a little, I'll just do something like that and I have it be a desk buddy. But um, the pipe cleaner is a good idea. You could, I don't have one with me. You could take one and you could kind of twist it into like a stand. Um, I also collect dolls, so if you've ever seen doll stands, it'll have like a little ring that goes around the doll's waist and then a base. You could totally make that out of a pipe cleaner, and that would give you a stand to uh, put with your creature. Typically though, I'll take like this right here, this owl, she's from Animal Crossing if anyone's been playing that game, I sure have. Uh, she has a, a tail, and her tail's a little bit shorter, but I just decided to make it long. Watch, now she's gonna fall over. But I decided to make it longer so that it would help her stand up. And that is a way that you can kind of manipulate the designs of your creatures to give them the ability to stand. I think that's the only thing I brought with me that can stand. I also have these and they just kind of, they just, close up that cute one. yeah, this one's based on Pokemon. I love, oh, the green screen. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um, I love Pokemon and I love flowers, so I combine them. All right, but yeah, that's, that's a really great idea to use the pipe cleaner, um, or you can just kind of manipulate your creature's design to help it stand up. Um, and for the, the wire that you can put inside of it, wire will make something a little bit sturdier. Like I said, I was using floral wire, which is that very thin green wire. You can use your hands with it, um, but just be aware that that could possibly break on you. Oh, they said, um, the, let's see, can you do an armature an ar okay, can you do an armature with pipe cleaners? Um, you could. I don't know if I would recommend it just because of the fuzzy stuff that's on the pipe cleaner. But I kind of don't see why you couldn't. When you make something with an armature, you are going to have to be very gentle because you're poking around the armature. So like when I poke into this, I'm just poking into more wool. But with the armature, I'll notice that like I can feel my needle like hit it. So it'll be like... <laughs> And um, just, just be aware of that. Typically, sometimes I'll put like a sewing pin into a detail to keep it on. And you can also feel the needle hitting that. So um, I don't like to keep pins in my work for too long. Um, but yeah, you can, I, I guess you could use a pipe cleaner as an armature. Um, I'm, not, I'm not really gonna say I'm the authority on that though. So it, I would recommend doing more research on that. But that is a very good idea. Okay. So we've got, we've got, I already, I like forgot what we were doing. I just got really into poking and refining it. And that's where it becomes a very relaxing thing to do. So we've got our beak in. It's just sort of a nub on the face. Zoom in on him. Oh, he, I feel like there's a penguin. Oh, he's, he's too powerful. There we go. So he's got himself a little nose. I feel like 
There might be like an ice cream penguin that looks like this. I might be subconsciously channeling it. <laughs> but like I said, there's only so many ways you can draw a penguin. Okay, so what he needs now is he needs flippers. And for the flippers, I'm gonna go ahead and use the same blue. And this is what I've been doing lately is I'll just rub it in my hands to get it matted a little bit. Um, in some of the how-to videos I watched, and also I think in the pamphlet I got, they would take the wool and they would kind of roll it and you know compress it and then start poking at it. So that's a great way you can start as well. I'm using my pink needle again and I'm holding it wrong again. This is all about <laughs> it's all about owning what you do. And I've noticed, um, like with this uh, bunny I made also from Animal Crossing, I tried to give her a wire skeleton, but her limbs were too short. So that's something to, to remember. Um, also, if you are making a wire skeleton, one thing to remember is your proportions. So I would recommend taking the wire, especially if you're, you know, kind of new to making these things and you don't have quite a handle on it, I would recommend having the wire be longer than you need it. So like, I'll make the skeleton and then I'll just have like these crazy limbs sticking out and I'll start felting. And then um, when it gets to the length that I want it to be, then I'll trim the wire and bend it in. And that's just so that you don't cut like a tiny wire and then end up with a creature that has arms that are like really short. You want them to uh, be the right length. And that having proportion right really helps make your, um, your creatures look good or make them look cute or just however you want them to look. How I poke myself. Okay, so we have our flipper. This flipper might be a little short. No, it's not as perfect. Okay. <laughs> If I were to refine it more, it would probably be too short, but we're just going to jab that in. And you'll notice that um, he's, he's got happy arms right now. So if you want, you could leave him with happy arms, or you could just felt down here at the tip of his uh, flipper, and that will make him more, um, it'll make him more of a gentleman. I think I'm going to just felt a little bit in the middle, so he'll be like excited, but not too excited. Okay, so there we go, he's got a flipper. Let's go ahead and get that other flipper on there. Oh, and with regards to uh, places to follow, I would, I would really like to like be a part of a community, especially as an artist. I'm admittedly a little bit uh, shy or like reclusive, so I don't, for instance, I don't really know anyone else who does needle felting, um, but you could, there, I know there's some groups on Facebook. I joined one recently that I've been like too shy to talk in, but there's groups on Facebook where people will support each other and they'll like share what they make. Um, and that's a thing you can look, look for. I'm sure that you could look for textile clubs or you know communities at like your local art centers and you may find some needle filters there or even you could go to trade shows and or not trade shows like craft shows art shows and kind of see if you can find anyone there too i'm half talking to myself like you should do those things <laughs> um okay there we go so we've got our flipper number two We're gonna get that on there. Let's see. I think I put it a little bit. See right there, I had it. Um, I had it too low, so I just tore it off, and that's because I had just started putting it on there. I have made uh, commissions before, where I put the eyes in, and then after I finished them, I I realized I didn't like them, and. I had to take scissors and just sort of snip the eyes off and then cover them up with more felt. So, you know, that is possible to do. It's, it's a pain and you're not going to get what you felt it out all the way. Oh, wow. Okay. 
I don't know if the mic is picking up the sounds that it makes, but it's like. Oh, Debbie says you should start one here locally. I'll join. Oh, <laughs> Debbie said I should start a club locally and she'll join. See, I, I like ran a club in college, not for needle felting, for like special interest. And it was one of those things where it was like I had to start the club that I wanted. So sometimes that kind of is what you have to do. And it's like, I don't, I just want to, I just want the club to already exist, but uh, that is, that is something you have, you got to do sometimes. And I may, I may think about that. I could at least start something online. Maybe we could think about a crafting club at the History Center. Maybe we could have a crafting, crafting club at the History Center. Miss Liva just said that. I'm not against that. <laughs> okay, so... Our penguin, he's very stout. So just remember that he's sitting. That's kind of why he's so short. But uh, there we go. So now he's got, he's got his two flippers. One of them, I think one of them's a little bit longer than the other. That's where the refining comes in and you can just, purple needle. <laughs> you can just come along the edges and make them make it come together tighter. Like this, for instance, I would consider this to be a very loose felt. The body's densely done, but all the details we've done are very loose. All right, so the last, well, ow. <laughs> Arguably the last thing he needs is his eyes. And let's see. I would do black eyes, but I'm afraid that those wouldn't show up. So we're gonna ha give our penguin piercing blue eyes. He's, um. He wants to be in a boy band, and everyone loves boys with blue eyes. <laughs> so that's what our gonna, we're going to give our penguin. And uh, to, make the, to make the eyes, I just wadded up a ball in my fingers, and I poked at it a little bit into the mat. This is going to be a big eye. And then sometimes I'll just, where am I? There my hand. Maybe I shouldn't have wore a black shirt. <laughs> sometimes I'll just take the needle and I'll poke the wool into it. And then I'll take it like that into the figure. And that way you already have, you have like a handle. Thinking about like the penguin that was in the preview image, I feel like I have to apologize <laughs> because this penguin is very simple. But I think it's, that's kind of why I brought some of my other work that I spent more time on so that you can see what you'll get if you put more time into something. But also that you can make something fairly decent and cute in a short amount of time on a stream. All right, so our penguin has one eye. You could, you could leave it like that and see that he's winking at you. Are we gonna do the second eye? Oh, you know what? I should have felted that one a little bit more. Or my go-to is just put an eye patch on it and say it's a pirate. If you watch my piñata stream, I also suggested that there. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put the second eye on there. You could. We have a question. Is it possible to do the white behind the eye? Or is it hard to do that? Okay, so we have a question. Is it possible to do the white behind the eye, or is that hard, um, hard to, impossible to do? That is possible to do. Um, I like things that have beady eyes. Don't know why. Uh, but right here, here's a commission I'm working on. He's also from Animal Crossing. And you can see that I gave him, um, he looks like he just got his eyes dilated. <laughs> you can see that I gave him some white around here. And to do that, I just started off with the black. I felted that on there. And then since the roving, you can make it super thin. You can just kind of twist it like this. And then I actually do need to do another layer of white so that it's more um, vibrant. But I would just lay that on there and then take one of your thin needles and you're gonna felt it down and you're just gonna like follow it in a circle. And that will give you some white behind the eyes. You could also just start all the creatures I brought with me today have beady eyes. <laughs> but you could also just start by making an oval, like a white oval, and then just felting a pupil on top of it. Uh, this penguin, 
I might go ahead and give him a white, like a little shine on his eye because he loves to entertain people. And that makes him happy. Because... So we'll add some shine to his eyes. This is where like, because I make such tiny things, I'm like, why do I do this to myself? But you can just take like the smallest piece of wool ever. Oh, wrong penguin. Oh, that's cute. He looks good with, he looks good with shiny eyes. You can take the smallest piece of wool ever and felt it on there. And if you keep felting it, because what you're doing is you're pushing the fiber into something uh, dense. You can just keep on felting it until it's like super, super tiny, like just a little pin of white. Oh, I made mean, that one too big. See, I made this one too big, but if I just keep poking it, it'll get smaller. He's gonna have like, he's got kind of wonky eyes. One thing I've been contemplating lately is just putting googly eyes on them. I think they would look silly, but I like things that look silly. <laughs> so that's the thing you can do too, is if you don't want to make eyes or if you just want to make something that looks kind of funny, you can put googly eyes on it. Um, all right, our penguin. <laughs> he looks kind of silly, but he's got his bright blue boy band eyes and he's got some little white right there to show his enthusiasm as he's on stage. Arguably, you could say that he's finished, but here's where the fun comes in. Um, since we said he was in a boy band, I'm going to give him a bow tie. <laughs> Let's see what color. I don't think boys in boy bands wear bow ties, but they do in my world. <laughs> Um, let's see. To make the bow tie, I like making bows. I'm just gonna make myself an oval. And I'm going to felt it kind of flat. I made, I made it too. Spread it out just a little bit. Make our oval, so very rough once again. It's hard doing things mirrored. <laughs> we have our little oval, and then you can just felt straight down into the middle of that. This is gonna come out a little bit sloppy. And when you're felting down into the middle of your oval, I might have to start again. <laughs> I'm gonna start again and I'm gonna use a different color because that wool was a little bit cheap. I'll use yellow. I'll have a yellow bow tie. It'll match his feet. Everyone wants a bow tie that matches their feet. And this is just so I can demonstrate what I'm trying to show y'all. Um, if you really put time into it, you can make like felt ribbons. Bringing up Pokemon again, if anyone has ever seen there's this one that has little, it's pink and it's got little ribbons on it. And I got a commission for that one and I was able to make uh, the little ribbons out of felt. And you just got to put some time into it. You'll kind of want to hold it and just, you know, do it gently. But you can make little ribbon shapes. And what I'm getting at is that that's similar to what we're doing with our bow tie. If you, <laughs> of course, a real time saver is that you could just take a felt sheet and cut a bow tie and then sew it or glue it on there. But I want to show you guys that you can make one with the felt too. That is, that's what I'll do for the um, creatures on my Instagram sometimes is I'll just make their accessories out of sheet felt. But like... Okay, so now we have our little block. And then here's a part where you just felt right down into the middle of it. And that condenses the felt that's in the middle. This kind of looks like a noodle. All right, and fell off. And that will very roughly give you something in the shape of a bow tie. 
You could, maybe if you're making a mermaid, you could make a mermaid top this way too. All right, so now we're gonna plop that bow tie on there. And since the bow tie is the same color as his beak, I'm gonna put like a little dash of red in the middle to make it stand out. Or you could put it on his head and it could be a hair bow. Okay, so there is our penguin. We're gonna zoom in on him. This is a very simple penguin. He's got himself a bow tie. He's got his boy band blue eyes. You could, you could give him hair too. Um, this is a part where it's up to you. You could go to the craft store and buy those tiny little hats, put a little hat on him. You could make him a scarf. You can do really anything you want. Um, or you can just have your penguin be a penguin. You could make more penguins. This is the part where it's up to you, and this is why I love art. So, uh, gosh, I guess, unless anyone has any more questions, that, that they're might... Just, they're just sharing their thanks. They had a really good time. We had some kids join as well. Oh, so awesome. Do let them know that they can post their pictures on our Facebook page once they're done. Okay, awesome. So um, I'm, I'm glad a lot of you guys liked it. Uh, if you want, you can post your pictures of anything you've made on our Facebook page, and we will see. They'll all be brothers to the penguin. We'll have a big needle felt family. <laughs> All right, so I think that is everything I had to say. Thank you very much for coming, and bye. <laughs>